Hello students and I welcome you again to this wonderful lesson as we proceed with the computer uh, form 1. We are in topic 6, yes, and topic 6 will be looking at the operating system. If you remember, last time we, are, uh, we have just uh, finished looking at the uh, computer software where we introduced the computer software we defined the computer uh, software as the set of program uh, that commands uh, the system or the hardware what to do. Now we looked at the types of uh, computer software where we looked at the system software and the, the application software. You should be remembering those things. And the, on the system software, we said they are also classified in different ways. Uh, so according to how they are acquired and what they do and all those things. And we looked at the uh, some of the types of the uh, system software. We mentioned of the operating system, the utility software, uh, the language compiler and the or language translator. All those, they are the things that we looked at as the, the system software. And on the application, you can remember that the applications, they are the ones that the user uh, use or frequently on the computer. So you work on the application depending on what you want to do. Do you want to make the drawings? Do you want to uh, write a letter? Do you want to make some calculations? They are specific uh, applications or computer uh, application software that are there uh, for you to meet what you want. So we have looked at that. But today, it's as if we are going back a little bit by looking at one of the uh, software that we mentioned, that is the operating system. So today we are going to dig deeper on the operating system. So be there as we continue with uh, this uh, topic number six, the operating system. I am your teacher, W.A. Maoa. Now, to continue, let us define, let us try to define what a, an operating system is. So when we talk of an operating system, it is uh, the main program that controls the execution of user applications and enables the user to access hardware and software resources of a computer. So if you can see on this uh, uh, on this definition, we are talking of it's the main program, the main software. Yeah, it's the main software that controls the execution of user applications. Remember the user applications, the word processor, the spreadsheets, the PowerPoints, and many others, publisher, uh, and all those. So it enables the execution of those applications and it enables you, the user, to access the hardware and software resources of a computer. So it enables uh, the user to make use of what you want to do on the computer. Do you want to type a letter? For you to type a letter, you cannot just open a word without, uh, without maybe the operating system. It has to be there to <clears throat> assist you to uh, execute or to work better with your uh, applications. Now, what is the importance? What are the importance? What is the importance of the operating system? So here we're going to look at uh, uh, why should we have the uh, operating system, the OS. So the operating system is sometimes abbreviated to OS. So what's the importance? It uh, acts as the interface or mediator between the user and the computer hardware. So number one, the first importance of for having an operating system in your computer is for you, uh, for it to be a mediator between you and the hardware, the user and the hardware. So therefore, uh, user application programs do not directly communicate with the hardware devices. Instead, they send messages via operating system, which has the capability to give instructions to the hardware to perform a particular task. So what we are saying here is that for you uh, to use the application, whether it is a word processor, whether it's an Excel, uh, whether it's a PowerPoint or other 
our publisher, uh, anything else. So the, those applications, they don't just command directly the hardware what to do. Instead, they do via the operating system. So the operating system is the one that tells the hardware what to do. When we talk of the hardware here, we talk of the mouse, the keyboard, we talk of the monitor, we talk of the CPU and all its components inside there. So all those, the hardware, the tangible things, they, can, they are not just commanded directly by your uh, application, like the word processor, no. It is the operating system that commands the hardware what to do. Now, let's just have a, a view, a graphical view of the interaction of the user uh, with the application software and the hardware with the operating system as the uh, intermediary. So we are going to see here a diagram on how you as the user interact with your application and the, the, had, uh, the operating system as the, the go-betweener. Now, so here is the, the graphical view on what happens when you are working with the computer. Now, you are here as a, a user. So you are running the application uh, on, depending on what you want to do. Do you want to type something as a, a document? Do you want to make something like a, a, a presentation? Do you want to play music? Do you want to, uh, to run uh, like the video? Uh, do you want to what do you want? Whatever you are doing, they are the applications. Do you want to draw? Uh, whatever you are doing. So you use the applications as the user. But the application software that you are using there, it sends uh, the user's risk request to the uh, operating system. So you are using the application. So that application, therefore, it sends whatever you have commanded that application to do. Then that application software, again, it also sends your request to the operating system. Then the operating system receives and executes the request. Then the hardware, what happens is that it receives and it does what the uh, operating system commands. So you, the user, you don't command the any of the hardware, no. You cannot tell the hardware what to do, but these are the steps. You, as a user, you go straight to what you want to do, and that is the application. You use the application. So that application software that you use, whatever you tell it, it doesn't also command directly the hardware to say, hey, monitor, show me this, show me that. No, uh, it is uh, also through the operating system. So the operating system tells what is supposed to be done by the hardware. So I guess you get what happens when you are using the computer. So the operating system, therefore, is the go-between, therefore, between you, the user, and the hardware, because the computer basically is a hardware. So for the hardware to do what you want it to do, therefore, it has to go through the operating system. And you, the user, you use the application programs. Get it right from there. Now, let us look at the types. What are the types of uh, the uh, computer uh, operating systems? So there are a number, they are classified as well. So operating systems can be classified according to the number of tasks, the number of users and user interface. So these are the classes, they are classified according to the number of tasks an operating system can do, number of users and user interface. Now, the first one, we said uh, a class according to number of tasks. So number one, we have the single program operating system, the single program operating system. So this one, uh, it allows processing of one application program in the memory at a time. So what we are saying is one program is being processed at a time, no two programs there, one program at a time. Now, the user can only run one interactive program at a time, uh, exit from it, uh, from the program before loading and running another program. So you do one program, you do one thing at a time. So when uh, that thing is done, then you close that one, you do the other thing. That is what means uh, the operating system. So 
uh, a good example is uh, like what we do today uh, it's more advanced with most of the operating systems that we are running they are they they run a number of programs you can play music while you are typing yeah so uh, a number of programs they are uh, running at the time same time but the single program it operates one program at a time then the second one according to the tasks is multitasking operating system so on this one uh, what we see here is that it allows a single cpu a single processor to execute what appears to be more uh, more to be more than one application program apparently at the time so it uh, does more than one application program it can run more than one application program at a time for example i just mentioned to say you can be playing music as you are uh, typing a document and also maybe opening also other documents so through processor scheduling the operating system allocates time slice to each uh, read a task so what happens is uh, the operating system uh, it uh, schedules the time it shares the time to all the programs that are running there now classification according to number of users so we have done with the first one number of tasks the, uh, the class of uh, operating systems are according to the number of tasks that can be operating the single user then mat uh, mat uh, multitasking so there is a uh, one task can perform one task others multi task single task or multitasking and here we are talking of the user so here we have the single user operating system when we talk of the user now it's to be used by uh, the user or you as a person how many users can do that thing uh, can operate on that operating system at the same time so in the single user operating system this one is designed for use only by one person then it can not support more than one person and runs only one user application program at a time so e.g palm operating system microsoft disk operating system this these types of operating systems only allows one person to use and it can also run one task that is one program at a time so that is a single user operating system then there is also multi-user operating system multi-user operating systems so this one allows more than one user to interactively use a computer for example we have windows uh, 2003 server unix novo windows uh, nt uh, 2000 and the linux all these the and many others today uh, technology is more advanced so they allow more users to use uh, to operate at the same time so that is uh, the uh, multi-user operating system another one is the classification according to uh, interface according to interface first the interface when we say the interface it means the interaction between the user and the, a computer the interaction how uh, what is the interaction how or the mediator something that goes between the two uh, there is this face this face and what is it in between so that is an interface something that uh, coordinates the two so number one is the command line based uh, interface command line based interface uh, command line uh, based interface this one lets the user type a command at, uh, at a command prompt so this one what happens is that the user uh, commands types a, a command to tell the computer what to bring out so the computer reads the typed command from the command line and executes it so in this command line os what happens is you type a command uh, the short abbreviation then straight that one 
uh, the user, you go straight, you command straight to the operating system what to do. So that is it, the command line, uh, command line based operating system. So these commands can be uh, the descriptive verbs like print, copy, even abbreviation like deal, for delete, rain, and others. So you see, there are so many commands that you write, then when you write that, when you type that, then you are commanding the operating system what to do immediately. So using Microsoft uh, Disk Operating System, you can copy a file, uh, maybe code fruit from the hard disk C to floppy disk. So today we don't have the floppy disk. Uh, so uh, it's just an example to say you can copy, you can use the, the command copy from one place to the other uh, place to the other location. So that's what is being said here. So uh, you, after you type a, a command, what you do always, you press the enter key to execute that command. So immediately when you type a command, then uh, you press enter key, then uh, that, commands, uh, that command, it is done immediately. So what, is the, what are some of the drawbacks of this uh, command line based operating system? So it is difficult to remember the commands they use. So as a user, you cannot remember all the commands. So it is uh, hectic there because you have to memorize all the commands what the, com uh, the operating system should do. So it's difficult to do that and cannot process complex graphics. So there, no complex graphics there can be done as well. And also they are hardly making use of emerging hardware and software technologies. So even the modern technologies, you find that you can hardly use the other technologies or the hardware that are modernly made. But they, uh, they are advantageous to the people who uh, who make all the software engineers who develop the softwares those they are it, it works to their advantages even up to now menu driven interface so menu driven interface provide the user with a list of options to choose from so the interface is suitable for beginners who may have difficulties recording the command so uh, we see here uh, that uh, the interface. Here we are looking at the classification of full operating system according to interface. So we have looked at the command line based operating system and we have looked at the, the drawbacks of that one. But now another one uh, is the menu driven interface uh, operating system. So in the menu uh, driven operating system, uh, you have the options like the uh, first one, the command one, whereby you need to type the command. But this one is like an improved one whereby uh, the menus are there, the commands are there. So you just choose uh, one of the commands there uh, on what to do, what you want the operating system to do. So the menus are all there. You just choose or select what you want to do. So it can, uh, it can be simple. Uh, it can be simple menus or sophisticated, uh, sophisticated menus depending on operating system. So example, disk operating system shell and uh, disk operating uh, system uh, editor. So uh, sometimes it can be simple, sometimes they can be uh, uh, sophisticated or hard. So menu driven, it's whereby the operating system like the windows that we are using somehow it is menu driven operating system whereby when you open uh, you have to go to start then when you click on start there is a lot of menu there to say all right what do you want from this or this uh, list there that is what we are talking about the menu driven to say all right you click uh, on the menu then it is going to take you uh, to execute the command according to what you you decided Now, the third one is the, the user graphic uh, interface, which is also abbreviated to GUI, graphical user interface, graphical user interface. 
Now, on this one, this one is the latest effort to make the user interface more user-friendly. I just mentioned that like the windows, you find that there is the menu uh, there. When you click on start, then there is the menu that comes. That is the menu. But still more, you follow some graphics. So there are some graphics. Besides the menu there, you have some graphics. So the GUI makes the use of rectangular work areas called the windows or graphical objects called the icons. So like on the desktop there, there are different objects there. Those are called the icons, the icons. So, and also there are some commands there that are ex executed using the pointing uh, devices like the mouse. When you are moving the mouse, you go to the uh, icon or do you go to the menu, you right click or you click, then something opens. That is, you are commanding there, you are commanding the operating system what, to, uh, what it should do. So that one is the graphical user interface. Therefore, features are given an acronym uh, WIMP, WIMP, which stands for Windows, Icon, Icons, Menu, and Pointers. So the graphical user interface, they have got the features which are given the acronym WIMP. So WIMP stands for Windows, Icon, Menus, and Pointer. So examples of graphical user uh, interface operating systems is the Windows versions like when there was windows 2000 xp vista windows 7 windows 8 windows 10 windows 11 all these they are the graphical user interface operating systems the mac os uh, by apple uh, the apple computers the linux as well is also an uh, example of the graphical user interface operating system so to this far we have come to the end of part one uh, of operating system so we have introduced what an operating system is and we have tried to look at the classes or classification of uh, the operating systems. Remember, uh, we just mentioned that they are, are classified according to number of tasks and number of users and the user interface. So we are trying to explain uh, in the number of tasks what, what do we mean by that? Number of users, what do we mean by that? And uh, user interface, what do we mean and what are they? So by this time, I guess you have a clear picture of what an operating system is. But next time, we are going to look at the functions of the operating system. What are the functions of the operating systems? Be there next time as we continue on this one. I'm your teacher, W.A. Maora. Until next time, thank you for your attention.